Hey Lance here, the Vintage Speaker Audiophile. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, stereo versus multi-channel audio. Um, it seems like they're just two separate categories this day with, with multi-channel audio surround sound being the more modern version and stereo being kind of passe and historical. <clears throat> a lot of times, you know, when we think about stereo, we think about older audio files with vinyl and things like that. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is some of these topics that are lost to history that uh, give us some insight into how stereo and multi-channel are different, but also um, are, are some ways very, very similar. Um, they can be merged in home audio too. So let's take a look at this and let's get started. So where did stereo come from? Um, the way the story goes is a guy by the name of Alan Blue Lime, I think is how it's pronounced, got frustrated in the early talkie films um, because there was a single speaker that would um, play all the audio and dialogue, and it was positioned in one part of the screen. But as actors walked back and forth, uh, there was no movement of the audio, and it was a little bit of discon it was disconcerting. So. Legend, or in this case Wikipedia, has it that he proposed um, a, a, a two-channel recording system that would preserve the spatial relationship between the video and the audio. Um, these would be, you know, cut to some sort of uh, platter media similar to today's vinyl records. And this ended up solving a lot of these these original problems because properly set up stereo will reproduce sound in you know a fully 3d space you'll not only hear it left to right but you'll hear it up and down you'll hear depth um, in a properly set up system you can you can hear uh, imaging from the rear even so this was uh, kind of a great breakthrough and uh, we all ought to thank this guy uh, for taking us into the 20th century with audio so if we take a look at, at, at the sound that stereo can reproduce, um, what we have is something called a sound stage, where you have imaging of the performers and the instruments um, that'll be you know in the center, off to the left, off to the far left, etc. Um, but what this requires is proper positioning of the speakers and proper positioning of the listening position. Um, you'll hear the term sweet spot, where a sweet spot is often referred to as a point in the equilateral triangle between the speakers and the listening position. Now the reality is it's more of a sweet line because you'll get this imaging, any, anywhere along this line you'll get imaging and you'll get sound stage. And what, what ha essentially happens is when you get into this position, the speakers will disappear and the sound will no longer sound like it's coming from the speakers, but it will fill the room in all three dimensions. I've done a number of videos on this topic, so I won't spend too much time on it, but, uh, but essentially when, when the room is full of music, uh, you'll hear what's called a, a, a phantom center image in between the speakers, where the mixers of, of the track usually put the vocals, and they'll often put the drums there, they'll put the bass there. Then you'll get stuff off to the side. Uh, you'll often get backup vocals. Uh, one common technique is to take a piano and spread the piano sound across the sound stage so that the high keys are on one side and the low keys are on the other side. Some audio channel, some audio tracks will have imaging, you know, off to the far left, even 90 degrees. And rarer still, you'll have audio tracks that have some uh, content in the rear, but that's 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 kind of rare actually. So if this sounds too good to be true, and the reason I say that is is by far the majority of audio listeners have never heard proper imaging and soundstage from a well set up stereo. And the reason, as we mentioned, is because the listener needs to be in this sweet spot. Otherwise, if you move off to the side, all you're going to hear is sound coming from the speakers as though you had two speakers with individual sounds coming from each speaker. 
the other thing is uh, room characteristics are very important. Um, one of the things that hurts imaging and soundstage is wall reflections. Um, if you think about this, the sound comes from the speaker straight to your ears. And it also travels sideways and bounces off the sidewalls, and as well as travels backwards from the speaker and bounces off the rear walls or the front wall. And that can confuse the brain when, when the brain gets all these different um, timed waveforms. And it kind of destroys the brain's ability to perceive the three dimensional application of, of stereo sound. As such, the primary limitation here is it's best suited for a single listener sitting in a sweet spot. Um, to really get good stereo imaging and sound stage with two channel, you want your speakers set up well away from the walls, you want your listening position in a nice equilateral triangle, and you need to sit there and listen. You can't walk around, and that's a, that's a problem jump into full-blown surround stone, it's worth noting from history again here that there were, there were attempts to, you know, in, in resolve some of these limitations. And um, one of the ways they thought about this early on was to add a third channel in the center. And what that would do is improve imaging for off-sweet stops, off-sweet spot positions. Um, the problem is, is how do you, you know, how do you record that third channel to the media of the day when the media of the day was, you know, vinyl records platters with only two sides to the groove? Well, what they found with, with enough research is that uh, instead of a dedicated third microphone for, for three channel recording, you could get an approximation of that third microphone in use if you merge the left and right stereo signals and sent them to the center speaker. Now, we're talking about the 1950s here. Um, today, you know, if you say the term center speaker, everybody knows what that is. But if I said center speakers in the 1950s, people would kind of look at me surprised. Well, the reality is they were looking at that quite a bit. And, you know, there's a great story about Paul Klipsch, uh, who, who were selling, Klip, you know, Klipsch Corporation was selling the big Klipsch on speakers. And he went to design a center channel for center channel speaker for those. And one of his engineers said that's heresy to add a center channel speaker. And he said, yes, it is. And that's exactly what I'm going to call it. So what happens and how does the center channel help us? Um, it, it, if, if you listen without a center channel and you're centered on this center line or in the sweet spot, uh, your, your phantom center will be directly in the center. But if you vary off this line to the right or left, your phantom center will move left or right and it won't be in the center anymore. So adding the center speaker um, reinforced the, the center image or the phantom center so that you could sit off position and you could still get a pretty good phantom center, center image. Um, that's the principal advantage of it. It allows more, peop more people in the room to enjoy stereo audio. Um, this is something now that we're going to get into as, as surround sound uh, was invented to, to really solve this problem. And we're going to talk about that next. I mentioned earlier, I mean, true stereo reproduction can, can reproduce full three-dimensional sound. Um, and I think people in the 50s and 60s, maybe even the 70s, probably knew that quite, a, quite well. But as we've moved on away from stereo into um, not only multi-channel, but, but single Bluetooth speakers, the, the public knowledge of stereo imaging and soundstage has just dissipated. Um, I've bought and sold you know, over a hundred pairs of speakers in my day, and each one I demoed to the prospective listeners. And you can tell just by how um, a potential speaker buyer interrogates the listening environment as to whether they're aware that imaging and soundstage even exist. And I would say that less than 10% did. Um, I also belong to a, you know, a two-channel audio group on Facebook, and I conducted a poll there on stereo imaging and soundstage. 
And in that poll, 50% said they knew either little about it or wanted to know more. So the fact that, you know, stereo imaging and soundstage is kind of getting, getting lost to history is, is sad. And that's one of the motivations for this channel that I'll talk about in another presentation. But let's look at, you know, multi-channel surround sound. This was really invented now to, to provide a full solution for this, where you have five, seven, nine, eleven, I think, you know, many channels. I think the latest uh, Atmos specification has a 16 channel uh, spec. Um, and what we did is we started out with five, you know, 5.1, if you remember that acronym, where we added we added the center speaker, you know, in the front, but also we added two to the side. And then we added a couple more to the rear, and then we put, you know, some on the overheads. And, you know, the advantage of this is you, you do get this great spatial distribution of audio across the room and across the listening positions. But what does it cost you? I mean, installations are complex. Um, an 11 channel Atmos, you know, with four speakers attached to the ceiling and a dedicated um, audio receiver with 11 channel outputs, not only, not only you know, is expensive and, and sometimes difficult to install, but just tuning those environments is, is kind of difficult. Um, getting the right balance for all the speakers can be a challenge, e even though there's software, you know, like odyssey that does that nowadays it, it still is a it's a complicated situation and certainly you can't ignore the expense i mean the expense of 11 channel or 13 channel multi-channel audio over simple two channel is appreciable yet you can get you know elements of three-dimensional um stereo imaging with just stereo so what does all this mean to us? Um, today you have a choice. You have, two, well, you have three choices. You have the single speaker approach, you know, the Bluetooth channel approach, which, you know, the, the Bluetooth speakers today are quite good and allow you to walk around the room and enjoy your music. And I have them and I use them. You have stereo, uh, which, which is great at producing 3D sound, but only if you're sweating in this sweet spot or sweet line. And then you have the multi-channel. So a lot depends on what your application is. Um, if you're, you know, shooting for a, a multi-seat home theater to play movies, yeah, you know, and you want to set up 11 channels, set them up. That's great. But even in that case, um, if you're a, a single movie watcher, um, you get away with two channel pretty well because you know if you one of the one of the videos I have done is how to test the imaging in your stereo system using movie codec demos. You know air, airplanes flying back and forth, helicopters flying from behind you, and in the sweet spot you hear that all like it's surround sound. Now maybe it's not you know quite as um, distinct because you don't have those dedicated channels blasting in your ear. But a lot of people would say that the sound is more natural than it is with multi-channel surround sound. If you're a single listener and you do movies and you do audio, uh, as I am, I, I've abandoned the surround sound approach. It's just too complicated and the value isn't there. It just isn't worth it. Now, I've never done 11 channel. Maybe 11 channel would, would change my mind. But I've done 7 channel. And the, the value for movies over stereo imaging and soundstage just isn't there. Of course, you know, the best is, is if you can you do both. And a lot of these AV receivers have what's called a peer direct mode where they, uh, they bypass all the circuitry, complicated circuitry for the surround sound. And they just pass the signal through peer stereo. And then you get the best quality. Uh, because quality is key for proper imaging and soundstage. Man is, first of all, if you're not intimate with stereo imaging and soundstage, get intimate with stereo imaging and soundstage. I have a number of videos on this. 
um, I'll link a playlist at the end that you can you can look at and you can learn more about it. Second, if you're a multi-channel uh, guy already and you're listening to movies and you know five and seven channel audio, try switching to disc two channel and sit in the sweet spot and see how good that is. I mean, I, I found that it was more than good enough for my movie watching experience. So I abandoned uh, the multi-channel approach. I'm interested in hearing what you all think. Uh, let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching if you've got this far. Um, smash that like button and subscribe button if you haven't because that really helps the channel and we're really getting some nice, nice growth. Uh, thanks, Lance out.